So size favorite knives are these and this serrated one because redfish is very tough scales and skin. Once he's used this serrated knife, he goes in to cut against the bone to get as much meat as possible off the red fish. We are at Beautiful Rock Crusher. Canyon and Chris River with our camper and our sweet little dogs, Aspen and Coco. We are back from Crystal River. Um, I forgot to tell you guys, when we go out fishing, we always set a little crab trap and we see how many crabs we can get because it's a really fun way to make crab cakes or crab claws. So we caught four this weekend, six last weekend. So I wanted to show you how cute those little blue crabs are. And then with the redfish we caught, we are making a garlic lemon butter redfish and you're gonna need the rice flour, lemons, garlic, one shallot, some fresh parsley, capers, and butter. So once that gets going, I will show you exactly what I do to get that perfect sauce. So I'm gonna teach you how to clean a blue crab. Um, I have my little cute, what do you call these? What do you call this? Crab uh, claw crackers. crackers. And this cute little tool that has a little fork on the end and a spoon to kind of help you get that lump crab, crab meat out. So the first step is, and do a close up, you're supposed to go into the back right here and pull, and it really is not that hard to do, all of this stuff out. This you throw away. All these lungs here, you do not eat. So I clean all of this out and then I, I take my water and I rinse all of this out. So once this is clean, which I have one here that's clean, I break it in half like this <laughs> and size is giving me a funny look. And I move some of this stuff around here and this is where all your lump crab meat is. And this is where you will use your tool here and you get in and you get all this beautiful lump crab meat coming out. So. Um, cakes for us. So, okay, so it takes some time, but you get, in the body you get meat. Second, this is our favorite part. So when you crack it and you twist it, most of the time you get lucky to get more meat out of there. But this is the favorite of ours. You crack that open, you wiggle it a little bit, and all this fresh claw meat comes out. And what I like to do is get some butter, Cajun seasoning, or if you wanna do garlic and you saute, these puppies up of course after they're boiled because I boiled these for about eight to ten minutes and that is our favorite piece and these things work really really good so that's how you do it so to start off we're gonna do olive oil and come over here so they can see it Not to cover, not the corners, but 
around like that. Get that nice and hot. And then I've coated our red fish in this delicious rice wheat flour. Um, I recommend it. It's really great with shrimp. It's a light and it's not, you know, you don't have to use any egg wash coating or anything like that. So the trick is to get your pan extremely hot. So everything is ready. You get some olive oil in the pan, which is hot so we don't have to wait on it. And when I know when my oil is ready, you put your little garlic in and it starts to sizzle on the bottom. That is when everything is super hot and perfect for your redfish. The redfish has this beautiful sweet uh, rice flour. I put it on there. It's a coating. You don't need egg wash or anything. And it really keeps it healthier and crisp. Um, normally I use a neutral oil, but I'm out. So olive oil is gonna have to do. You don't wanna crowd the pan. So I might have to do batches and get back to show you the final product. But everything is ready to go in. So after we do this spread fish, I'm gonna put it over here and then I will start with the sauce to go on top. So now everything is perfect. Once it starts to look like this, turn it over. You want it a little golden, not too super golden because it's so thin and delicate. You want to be able to take the entire fish out. So you don't want to get it super done on that side because you want to be able to get it out without breaking up the fish. you've done your fish which I have on this side over here kind of draining from the olive oil I drain the olive oil and I'm putting butter in a pan before I deglaze the pan I always do a shallot I like a full shallot but I've diced up um, it just makes over the sauce sweeter so you want to saute this down until fragrant it only takes about two minutes to fast forward that, which I'm doing the steps a little bit ahead of time. I do three garlic cloves. You can mince it. My favorite tool is this guy. I always save a lot of time with him. I do come in here with a spoon, you know, and if it falls in the pan, it's fine. I love garlic. You don't? Do one close. But we like a lot of garlic around here, so. Which, I don't know if you guys have one, but my favorite spatulas are the ones that are heat resistant. Use this every day. I've got about 50 of them. They give you all the measurements on the back. I love this thing. So once you have all this going, heat up, we're gonna deglaze it with wine. But we don't wanna rush the shallot. So while we're waiting on the shallot, this is by far my favorite seasoning of all times. I'm trying to make my own. I think I have a decent recipe, but for now, I do this in layers. It's amazing, it's great. Um, the red top is the one with pepper. The blue is without. It has cumin in it, it's great. I do a little drizzle of that. And then deglaze with about a cup of wine. Scrape all those great pieces off the bottom once you deglaze, the wine will release those. And then you want to add your capers. I love capers. 
Don't use a lot of the juice. It's very salty and acidic. But I did a little bit of juice and a lot of capers. If you don't like the capers, you don't have to use them. Then you want to zest a lemon, but I would only do maybe half a lemon. Sometimes when you over zest, it's powerful and you don't want that. And after that, I would start with a half a lemon. Squeeze, make sure you catch the seeds here. You don't want any seeds. And you want to reduce that by half, which could take five minutes. Once reduced, we're going to serve it with some fresh parsley. And then once it's plated, I'll show you what the final product looks like and we'll drizzle it over that red fish. All right, guys, so as you saw, Ryan cooked us a fabulous meal with the redfish that we caught this weekend. So now it's the truth. We're gonna give it a taste test. See how it is. Let's see how it is. And be honest. Nice flaky fish. It's perfect, it's delicious. So Good. fresh, no hint of fish on it. It's not fishy at all. Capers are coming through, but not overpowering. <laughs> that light little batter really did, did the trick. All right. It's delicious. Pairing it with a pear gorgonzola salad and, of course, my rice. And he loves the rice. I love the rice. Hope you all enjoyed it.